can um, imagine for myself is like a small corner table here because I can have light, which is nice. Um, it's in a corner, so it's not like looking weird next to this. Nothing can go next to this. And to this can only move a little tiny bit in this direction. No, it's still open. Yeah. Push it further. I still think there's a possibility to do something nice in the living room. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think I would prefer that as well. Uh, we're expecting the delivery of the furniture here. Yeah. Hi everybody, I think I finally managed. Here is Maud. Hi Maud. Hi. I'm a bit shy on uh, virtual meetups. I switched to Chrome and it worked. Light uh, I is on. No. I see. Um, I see the countdown. Good. Perfect. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. So, and Mo, did you check if the live stream is working? Oh, it's just a moment it should. I'm trying to, but yeah, oh, yeah, now it's working, I think. Yeah, it's, it says live and it's working. It's one minute behind. Yeah, 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 that's that's normal. All right, so we're all we're all here. Everyone seems to be so. able to talk. And let's see, can we um, can we start with a quick roll call? Um, I would say if we go through through the list of names, everybody says who they are, uh, where they're calling in from, and which team they're part of. Um, how do we start? So who begins? Um, Maud, do you want to go through the names from the top of the list? Okay, I can try. So, um, 
I am on the top of my on the list of the list I see, so I'll go for that. Uh, I am from Open Data, and I guess most of you actually heard me today a bit. And uh, I'm organizing, and I'm very happy to hear from uh, your results and uh, how far you went in this pre-event. And then I see Oleg. So yes, I'm, I'm Oleg. I am I'm calling in from, from Bern, one of the organizers, and really looking forward to hear all your results. And I'll tell you a little bit about the data collection we made this weekend and how we're going to make sure that helps us with the next hackathon. Then I see Philip. Hi, this is Philip. I'm working at Lucerne University. I call in from home, a small village close to Alton. And um, yeah, sadly enough, I didn't have to participate act at the time to actively participate, but I'm very interested in the results of the challenges. And I was for the original hack day contributing a challenge. So I'm first of all, very interested in your results. And second of all, looking forward to the actual uh, hack days to uh, happen. Me too. Then I see Steph. Ah, so Steph's microphone is not working. He wasn't part of any of the teams, unfortunately, but I'm curious to see what came out of it. So welcome, Steph. Um, then we have Nicole. Can you hear me? Yeah, very well. Well, not anymore if you're talking. No, I muted myself. I had to like change it in the preferences of uh, Chrome. So now it's good. <clears throat> For me, you disappeared again. I don't know. Does anybody hear Nicole? Because I don't. Because I muted I... myself again. Yes. <laughs> ah. Okay. So I suggest you come back a bit later because again I don't I don't hear you. Then we have Tina. I'm not sure if Tina is here. Does anybody hear Tina? Also not. Okay. Um then there is somebody who is just a little um, strich, a little line. I don't know who it is. Who it is. I don't know if it's me or and not. Then we it. have uh, Nico. Uh, maybe, yeah. Oh, I also don't hear Derek. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm unmuted now. Uh, I'm in Bern and I was part of the photovoltaic team. Okay, that's great. Then it, it's difficult because there are lots of fellow Jitsers. There's only fellow Jitsers who are, so um, I guess, uh, Nico, if you manage now. Nico, can you try unmuting yourself? Yes, I did before. Ah. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we well, now we, we hear you.
Oh, it's strange. Each time you say you unmute yourself, we hear you, and then it goes away again. Because I mute myself again. Because <laughs> if I stay like you have the background noise, and that's not nice to hear for other participants. No, for me it's good. So please, can you introduce yourself quickly? So I was like working with Tina on the client analysis. And uh, I don't know why she is not online. Maybe she had the same problem as I had. Um, but yeah, I tried to text her on Slack. She's online, but she hasn't replied yet. Okay. Great, thank you. And is there anybody online that I didn't mention? Because the list is uh, not very easy to go through. Yeah, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Yeah, uh, my name is Andre, Andre Bogomolov. Uh, I'm uh, calling from Germany, from the city Duisburg, if someone knows it. It's near nice. Dusseldorf or Essen or somewhere in the Köln area, maybe. You know Köln for sure, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, great. So uh, I was quite, quite excited about the challenge of uh, understanding the customers without using the information which uh, utility companies have already. So I was working on that and um, I will be glad to present my solution today. Okay, fantastic. And I think we also have uh, Wolfram. Yeah, hi, this is Wolfram. I hope uh, you can hear me. Um, yes, very well. I participated last year. I, I registered for this year. I didn't take part in any challenge. I'll, I'll be back when you guys have the, going to do the new uh, live uh, version a little later. But I'm curious to see what uh, other people have worked on and what they have to come up with. OK, great. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody that I forgot or can I managed to join. Julius is here. Ah, great. Yes, hello. Uh, Ned, on what did you work? Yes, or I was part of the photovoltaic. Where is the best? Where is it the best team? Yes. So I okay, was cool. I'm trying to figure out what are the data sets available, what can we do on the technology side of it. Yeah. Super. So uh, we have, uh, if I recall it right, we have actually two teams who worked on the clients. Am I right? Nico and Tina, you worked and uh, also uh, Andre, but not together if I understand well, or am I wrong? Yes, exactly. Andrew, um, I contacted them all and uh, Andrew didn't see the message until this morning. That's why we split oh, okay. up into two groups. Okay, but that's, that's uh, great. That's interesting. And the photovoltaic team. Yes, I think we had a very Great. varied group of different people doing something. Okay, so who feels like starting? So what, we, why don't we just um, nominate somebody? And in the meantime, I'll just, currently I'm sharing my screen and I'm going to open up your project page. So if there's anything um, you want to, anything else you want to share, uh, slides or anything, it's probably easiest if you just tell me where to click. Um, you can try screen sharing of your own, and if it works, we'll switch to yours. Okay, so who's, who starts? Because I think I made a mis just mistake. Quick, Yomo, there's just a quick question over the chat, how much time we have per team? And I think the rule is, uh, the rule of thumb is about five minutes. Is that still, is that yeah, I would you? also say so. Yeah. Okay. So just a five five minute introduction. Tell us um, what, what was the starting point, whether it was a challenge or a data set or something else. Uh, what uh, what you worked on, uh, who were your team members, and what's your result and next steps or wishes. And everything else um, will be should be in the documentation, which we'll share for after the event.
Okay, so nobody's gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. um, this is Tarek on the photovoltaic team. Um, if you click on our uh, page, the document that it's referencing has, I guess, a quick summary of all of the useful details that we've uh, gathered together. Okay, so as a baseline, the initial, initial idea was to start from the premise that we have, um, say, for example, the data from uh, PSI or uh, Sonnendach indirectly, I guess, that says how much photovoltaic information, um, uh, energy is available in all of the uh, houses or the, all the buildings in Switzerland, but the idea would be to, to limit it to where is best. Obviously, Ticino would be an ideal spot because it's more south, kind of that sort of thing. Um, there was a lot of uh, back and forth about where to uh, get the information from uh, uh, places like Sonnendach. There was also a good data set from Walsh. Uh, I think it's Emily Walsh. Uh, uh, she posted uh, stuff on Zenodo, which if anybody doesn't know about Zenodo, they should know about that. That's a, uh, a, host, a site hosted by uh, the people at uh, the you know, Collider down in uh, Geneva. I forget the name, CERN. CERN uh, Collider in, in Geneva, they've put up uh, a bunch of, uh, I guess, easy access uh, documents, and they all have a DOI, a document index, so they, it's a permanent kind of reference. And this is a, a big handy, a handy thing to have for uh, re uh, researchers who want to reference data sets in their papers. So I don't think we got into actually digging into this. I, I had a quick look at what's in these uh, files, and it's uh, I don't think you're going to be able to preview it. It's, it's rather rather large. Um, so the, uh, she's gathered the data in the two forms. One is uh, by building, which is similar to what the Sonnendach has uh, in its map view, and also just classifying it in terms of tilt angle of roof and azimuth and so on for each of the buildings in Switzerland. The I guess the a lot of the discussion was about uh, w where can we find the um, the data that would tell us where is the best spot. And um, some of the information was, um, try, I guess, gathered in a number of websites, which I think you can see at the bottom of the, the very bottom of the paper on our site. It has sort of reference material that has uh, the links that we found uh, very helpful. One of them is, of course, this uh, Walch. Um, but PV tariff gives you the feed-in values. Uh, PV tariff .ch gives you the tariff values that you can expect when you set up a, a PV uh, uh, in, on Laga on your, on your roof. And uh, there's a bunch of other uh, stuff from Elcom that also gives you the uh, prices that you can get, or the, not the prices, but the, the money that you can get from the various uh, 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 undername, it's, it's, it's the uh, distribution companies that they pay different amounts in different parts of Switzerland. So it's kind of like um, uh, a, a visualization of a map and you can then uh, say, what if we put it in here? Now, we didn't actually get digging down into running these numbers because it's quite a lot of data. Um, what came up though in conversation, I guess from my side was just, if you go roll up a little bit there, uh, Oleg, to the part about the network limitations where um, even though the Sonnendach and Walsh say that there's this much solar irradiation available on a roof in some place in Switzerland, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can get that power to the net because the cables might be too small or the voltage rise might be too great if you added too much PV or the transformer supplying your entire area might be too small. So I did a quick um, survey, I guess, and that gives you the table just below there that says, uh, the Sun and Dock numbers are a little bit optimistic in terms of how much uh, PV you can put in just based on uh, kind of a hard limit of the network. So, for example, uh, the, the first one, the ho uh, house in Erzlikon has uh, a Sun and Dock number of 75 kilowatts, and the network maximum that I get from 
proprietary data. It's not public, but I can run proprietary data is about 59,000 uh, watts. So there's a 28% uh, I guess excess, uh, sorry, 28% too much on the sun and dock number. So we'd have to reduce the sun and dock expectations somewhat. And I imagine it's probably the same for the Walsh data. Um, what, what is surprising though, is like for a rural area, such as that uh, third from the last, the farm, the roof area of the farm is good for like a half a megawatt, but the line feeding it is only uh, up to like 34 kilowatts. So there's quite a disparity in, in the farm area. And also you see below in, in the industrial areas, those uh, big buildings in the industrial areas have a large surface area, but the line feeding them is not as uh, thick as is needed, is not a, a, as good enough to di diameter as is needed. So you have to scale back these things. So um, there's still a lot of um, detailed work to be done. So my take on it, I guess I, I'm summarizing now, but maybe we didn't actually get to summarizing, but I'm summarizing now is that there's a lot of ways to choose uh, places in Switzerland, the two uh, data sets that we have from one from Sonnendoc and one from Walsh that would give us good candidates. But I think then they have to be vetted against the uh, possible uh, values you can get uh, from the lines and feeding. So that's that diagram there. The diagram says the you can get it from Sonnendoc, uh, I think it is instead of solar dock, but Sonnendoc, Pongseha, or Walsh, and you get an accurate estimate of what's possible on each roof. Um, these probably can be linked by lat long so that we can uh, use a common form, but there's a bunch of feed-in tariffs to uh, LCOM or with v VESE or the um, PV tariff PVTariff.pungseha that will tell you how much uh, actual money can be generated. Those are sort of the raw entries to it. And then I think you have to come down to looking at what cables and transformers are actually feeding that uh, particular site to say that it's good or not. And that would give you then uh, the candidates, the best candidates for where to put solar roofs, uh, so solar on loggers on roofs. And we didn't actually talk about battery storage. If battery storage is taken into account, then this whole analysis kind of shifts as does the, the energy with time so that uh, this might not be a problem. The grid network might not be an issue if you can store the energy to a time where the grid is um, not so loaded as in the middle of the day or, or something like that. And also doesn't include in the, in the analysis I did, it didn't include any consumer part of it. So there's still a lot of uh, open questions to be answered about where best to put it, where, where best to put these PV uh, stations. So that's a, a quick summary. Anybody got any questions I can try to answer or maybe Julio or, um, oh, the team members. Ah, so, sorry about that. The, it's not like I did this all myself, for sure. Um, we had uh, Julius Krobach, uh, Martin Blatt, Maud, I was there for a little while. Oleg was there for a little while. Um, Nick Tina, I think, was was uh, participating in the background. Uh, and the uh, impetus from this uh, came from Xiao Jin Zhang. I don't know if I pronounced that right. And Nicole Hepler was also there. So we had quite a lively discussion on our chat page on uh, Slack. It was uh, oftentimes too difficult to follow, in fact, because there was like four or five threads running all at once. It's not a real good tool for collaboration in this respect. It's kind of a linear stream. So uh, I was a bit disappointed with that. It's also uh, not got a lot of uh, formatting help if you wanted to inject uh, images or tables or stuff like that. So Slack would not be my choice next time. May I ask what, if you have a, a suggestion for another tool? Oh, no, I don't. Sorry. That's OK. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, maybe I am just, just uh... to say there, um, I think there is a fintech um, hackathon going on also this weekend that also shifted to digital. 
maybe yeah. it would be worth it to exchange with other hackathons um, how they solved coronavirus care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a very good point. Uh, may I ask a very uh, naive question? Um, because I'm not really a specialist on energy. What would happen if, let's say, I decide to put a, a solar farm on my farm roof and it's uh, much bigger than the cable? Um, well, Overload. the cable cable turns into like have you ever seen the little wires in your toaster that get glow orange when you're making yeah, toast? Yeah, so it, it, it really physically uh, <laughs> no. Well, I haven't actually seen that, but no, it, it just uh, reduces the lifespan of the cable's insulation. The PVC covering on a cable uh, doesn't take heat very well. It's just plastic and yeah, yeah. it would degrade quite quickly and that would lead to uh, problems. So catastrophe. <laughs> and you you mentioned property uh, um, proprietary data uh, for the the infrastructure. Um, is there a chance to get there to this information or can we lobby for it? Uh, can, uh, yeah. Mm, that's because it's spread out over some 200 different uh, uh, suppliers, uh, electric distribution companies. So you yeah. would have to petition them each individually. Um, yeah. And the, the data that I am familiar with is coming from only, a, I guess, a smaller subset of those, maybe the German-speaking ones in Switzerland. So the, they might not even have the data for that. Uh, what, what I guess the best way would be if you presented a, a, a short list of possible candidates to them and said, would your network support the size of PV that we're proposing on these locations? And they, I think, for the ones I'm familiar with, could fairly easily do a join in their database and say, yay or nay. Yeah. So we, but I don't think be, you're going to get the yeah. data. Is that if that's what you're yeah. asking? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm asking. I mean, you answered the next step, also, of course. Mm. Okay, great. Maybe it's interesting also if you put a little note of what you just said. Okay, sure. Put it in the paper. It's good. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you very much. So the next up is, let's say, uh, Nico and Tina for uh, the client analysis. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, very well. I'll mute myself now. Perfect. Um, Tina, are you going to show the presentation? Is that fine? The PDF I sent, or like I sent it to Oleg as well, but I think he didn't read my message. I see your message, Nico, and I can open up your presentation. Just give me one second. Okay, cool. Thank you. Because I'm working with two screens, and if I like show both screens, it doesn't make sense. No problem. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. So let me just switch my sharing mode. <laughs> okay, can you still see my screen? Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Yep. Perfect. Go. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Um, so every time when I say go further you can just like scroll down is that fine or like do you have the pdf version as a pdf because it's in a browser now what you opened yeah yeah, yeah. It's, i can i can just keep scrolling when you say good next. okay so basically um the challenge client analysis 2.0 and the power of open data um we like we ended up just being Tina and me. Um, there was like I started like trying to contact the people personally because I only joined at one o'clock, um, and then we had the feedback round I think in the afternoon. So Tina and I we ended up uh, doing this challenge together alone, 
And uh, yeah, we like basically faced most of the the question what some other people, as we saw in the afternoon, also had the problem, like what the heck happened to the data? So where where was it? Where is it? Where could we find it? And first, I'll introduce you guys into like uh, what approach we took, and then I'll hand over to Gina, and then we at the end we're gonna give you some recommendations. Um, we planned about maximum 10 minutes, just because you said before it was five minutes per group. I hope that's fine. Okay, I assume it's a yes. <laughs> so yeah, can yeah, you scroll true, down? True. Go ahead. <laughs> to the next page, please. Awesome. So the research approach um, that the BFS, which is like the, uh, I assume you guys know it, the the National Research um, of Statistical of Switzerland. Um, and they actually, they have like this research approach on how the energy consumption is um, done on a national level. And we understood uh, concerning the segmentation, and we see here the segmentations, for instance, is on like households on the left side, and then um, the transportation industry uh, on the right side, what we were surprised about, and that's where we like, we're like, okay, where the heck is the data? Because we got like, um, we got the data set of like overall Switzerland on a national level, but we couldn't get dig deeper as we see in this graph on a cantonal level. So um, based on that one, you want to go to the next page. Um, I'll show you one example, for instance, from Lucerne. So we found this data on the Lucerne website, but as you can see here, they only go into like the electricity and the gas, whereas in the previous study, they also mentioned the oil and even renewable energy. And, um, and the fourth one was like uh, coal. Yeah, coal. Um, so basically that was one of the challenges that we had is that we, like the BFS doesn't provide on a cantonal level the data, but it does on a national level. And if you go to the next slide, um, basically there is that one interactive map that they provide, which has all the data and all the statistics that they covered in, in any topic, but not in the energy section. And so based on this one, what we tried out is, um, at the end, I'll show you is to find out uh, also how inter what interactive tools you can use to have a map uh, that also illustrates that. But we were pretty surprised on like finding or the fact that there's actually an, on a national level there is a, a data set available, but not going deeper or digging deeper on a cantonal level and neither that it is on like this platform called atlas.bfs.admin.ch. Um, so yeah, so uh, uh, with this research in mind, um, if you wanna go once one further, um, we started doing it for fun and trying with like, uh, um, yeah, let's say, let's put it this way. So we, we tried to like, focusing on smaller regions and not on the national level anymore. So if you wanna go one further, um, the search for openly available customer segmentation, which was one of the uh, tasks as well, as well to raise awareness of the customer segmentation in the open data area. Um, and basically uh, the previous introduction was the one from on a national level. And now um, if you look into into the one that the BFS also provides. If you want to go into the canton, it's like uh, you can find buildings based on re uh, residential use. Uh, so those are split it up in like single standing houses, blocks, or non non residential use as well. So there you can have like a kind of a segmentation, and then there is like further, there are further data sets as I mentioned before. Uh, but always provided um, from one canton itself. And then the third one is one of like Basel, which has um, way more um, information or Kinsalen like insights. And here I'm gonna hand over to you, Tina. 
Um, maybe one of the biggest challenges that I forgot to mention as well. So like basically when you look at Zurich and Luzern as well, like none of them really um, collect the same data. So as you can see as well, with the analysis, it's really tricky because like some of them collect over years, some of them collect um, totally different uh, demographics as well. So it's from any county or canton, it's like different again. So yeah, sometimes the years are the same, but sometimes like the region is totally different. So that's why we focus on one of them, which is which is. Okay, can you hear me? Perfect. I'm here. Yes, yes, we can. We can. Hear you. Yeah, can we go on the next slide? Uh, so yeah, that that's now the data set uh, uh, from from just Basel. So there's not a similar one from from other towns in Switzerland. So uh, we, we we tried like a segmentation using this data set and uh, segmenting actually. Uh, like sub-regions in Basel. So like the sub-regions, it's 24 regions are like our customers. And we have we found in this data set like 19 uh, factors, um, like different uh, kinds of factors. I will show some examples. And yeah, but the uh, basic assumption is actually that this data set includes factors which are all related to energy needs and consumption behavior of a region. Um, and then the limitations are that there are just not enough regions. It's just Basel. Um, they're very. It's very high level data. Um, I mean, individual households would be much more interesting to look at. Um, and of course, it's lacking many additional regional factors. Um, can we go to the next uh, um, slide? So I, I picked here for uh, three example factors from this data set, which is uh, building's mean age for a region, then the percentage of percentage of persons living in single households, and the population's age ratio. Um, yeah, and here you can see that when we plot these three factors, that uh, for example, here's a number of one person households goes up with building age, um, but also regions with the newest buildings do not have the youngest population age structure. Um, yeah, can we go then to the next slide? Um, yeah, yeah, one now could use, for example, like an elbow plot to decide on the um, number of segments. And um, from this like elbow plot here, the uh, uh, three, two to three groups would make sense. And we decided for two, um, for three groups. Yeah. Can we go to the next uh, slide? Um, yeah, and here you can see just, it's just the previous plot with the example factors. And now the three segments show up in different colors. And at least the two households in green, are, you can see from this example, um, factors are close to each other, which means then that the extreme of a high percentage of one person households and newest buildings might be a characteristics. So what would be like one could see from such plot. But of course, this, uh, this segmentation, it includes all the factors, the 19 factors. So these were just the three examples. And then we can go to the next slide. Um, uh, could you go to the next slide? Possibly it's closed. Yes. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can yeah, hear I think you. It's one too much. Can you go one back? Ah, please? sorry. So Hello? can you hear me? I think you didn't. Yeah, I think you have to wait because like I don't the, hear the anyone. Next. Hey, Tina, is your connection maybe bad? Yeah, I also have troubles now to hear people, to be honest. Can you hear me now? 
Yes, you know, I can. I was somewhere lost. It suddenly, uh, maybe I talked to myself. Uh, no, I, we have to hear you. Yeah. Okay, I don't know from where, uh, until when did you hear me? <laughs> until now, the next slide of the potential next steps you wanted to introduce. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was just that what could do as a next step from this, like defining the characteristics of the segment and then finding like proxies to energy consumption in each region and see how it relates to our segmentation, which could be like proxies as for example, from Swisscom, they have like the number of devices in a region. If we don't know the actual energy consumption, it could be any close proxy. Possibly, and then, um, yeah, an example question which then could be answered with is the assumed high potential region uh, consuming less or more power. But I mean, this is really just what we did for fun since there were those limitations. It's just a small number of region, regions, and I'm not sure if the factors make sense as such. Um, yeah, but we wanted to show just something. Um, what could be done in like theory. So, and uh, I think that's from my side. Can you go to the next uh, slide? Yeah, so basically I'll, I'll take over now. Um, so what the, the map that we introduced before, one of the recommendations that we would give is to maybe use those two libraries. There's are two available on like um, R um if you i mean the biggest problem as you've seen so far is the data collection on a swiss level so it's like really rare to like get data on a cantonal level on a swiss national level it's fine and you could do like the um, but it, then you don't get into all the details which tina already showed now so to make things short so those two are like options that we could also um provide to the challenge owner to like look or explore those two because it's not as we said it's not available on like the interactive one on the bfs now and if you go want to go one slide further i'd like to end up this um presentations with a quote from uh the CEO of Dell saying technology now allows people to connect anytime, anywhere to anyone in the world from almost any device. This is dramatically changing the way people work, facilitate 24 hours, seven days a day, seven week, seven days a week. Uh, collaboration with colleagues who dis dispersed across time zones, countries and continents. And it was really interesting uh, to participate in this hack day uh, virtually. Um, nevertheless, if you want to go to the next one slide, the very, very last one, <laughs> uh, we'd like to give you guys like some recommendations as in like, for instance, with the virtually step, which could be useful for future. I think like the, personally, I really believe like the, it's, um, it's very beneficial if you have something online and you can share it from home and you can like, uh, do it from anywhere in the world. Um, but one thing maybe to keep in mind is especially the tool set that we get or that you guys can provide. For instance, what I'm listing here would be to work maybe in future on Google Colabs, because if you work in R, for instance, or R Studio, it's really difficult to, sh to have a sharing um, like this. And also maybe from the administration organizer um, side, would be nice to have more frequent hangout calls. And especially with the one like we had like the biggest problem that we couldn't like reach out to the one that gave us the challenge in order to fully understand it. And nevertheless, I really hope that uh, we could give you some insights. And yeah, as I said, I think the biggest challenge um, was to find appropriate data sets to solve this uh, challenge. And if you want to add something, Tina, you can go ahead. I'm fine, yeah. Hmm, awesome. 
So that was our presentation then. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for the precious feedback because it's, uh, I mean, for me, it was also a first time uh, really like the, on this scale. So um, uh, yeah, uh, every feedback is very precious and every uh, suggestion for new tools or new, uh, new ways to do it. Uh, yeah, very, very welcome. So, uh, do you have a comment, Oleg? Uh, I think this is a, a su super interesting project and you've really dug into the data and uh, you've really dug into the, uh, you know, a, a really wide open context. Um, I, I really have to apologize for the fact that the, the expert did not support you, the, the, the person who challenged you to do this, but I think you've done really well for yourself. So, you know, pat on the back. And thank you so much for submitting the uh, results in that form. We'll just, uh, you know, uh, attach it to the project page so uh, other people can check it out. Thank you. And and yes, as as to your feedback for the remote hacking, absolutely uh, taken uh, and will be further developed on. Thank you. So now we would have uh, Andre. Uh, who also has something about the client segmentation. Yep, can you hear me? Yes, very well, great. Okay. I'll mute great. myself now back. So I try to share my screen now. Okay, can you see the presentation? Can you yes, see it? perfect. That's, that's nice. Yeah, so great. Just uh, just to ask, uh, how many, um, because the presentation was quite technical, just to ask, do we have um, uh, people who are not technical also on the stream? Like from a marketing or business? I'm not very mm -hmm. technical, but I can go along. If yeah. I, I'll ask my maybe question. Type, if I, go ahead the, the way you want. Maybe the one who are technical can type uh, one into the console, into the chat, and the one who are not technical can type two. No? And this way we can check also who, who is sleeping and who is not. Okay, two plus one, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so well, so we have like 50-50, so I will uh, see that, that, that it's understandable for everyone. So right, uh, this uh, the idea what I was working on is uh, location AI, and it helps basically to understand you as a neighborhood of your customers and uh, why it's important. So if we look at the statistics, statistics are often very hard to understand, and uh, what they tell us about the customers is basically who the customers are, and this again is quite hard to to, to use in marketing um, because. What's important for marketing is to understand who, moment, oh man, okay, this is, <laughs> right. So important to understand who the customers wants to be, actually. And because this way we can dive into the dreams and, and the wishes, and then we can try to fulfill the wishes of our customers with our products. And uh, one thing which defines us as, as people, and it's our neighborhood. And this is what we are striving for. We are moving into the areas where we want to be. We try to surround ourselves with people uh, who, are, who are like us. And um, if you look again into the statistics, it's really simple to see how the surrounding influence you. For example, uh, we see that the number of the sales of electrical cars is way over the top in the United States and California compared to other locations. And it is for, from, the, from the sales perspective, it's agreed that it's because of the surroundings that you get this uh, critical mass of the people that driving uh, each other to certain decisions. So uh, I looked into, the, into this in my solution and uh, what I try to do is to describe the surrounding of the, uh, of the customer. And uh, in this solution, uh, what it basically does, it's um, analyze available, um, the, the surrounding of a specific address 
and um, analyze it, for example, how hipster the area is, how much nature it is. Is it, for example, outside of the city? How uh, friendly it is for children? Uh, how peaceful the area is? Um, or, for example, uh, fitness opportunities. And this way we can understand what actually the customer tries to achieve. Um, we can actually jump into the live demo. Mm. Right, uh, can you see it? Press one if you if you can see this on the screen. It works, we can see it, no worries. Right? Yep, we got it. Uh, so it works only for Germany, for, for my area, because it was uh, interesting for me to, to find this data actually for Germany. But uh, and this works mainly with OpenStreet data and uh, with some other information, which is usually available for, uh, for, for different uh, European countries. So if we type here, for example, Duisburg, my home city, and right, right. It shows that uh, the area is uh, a bit hipster. There's not much nature, but there is some nature. Uh, it's quite peaceful area. In this, is it's uh, center of Duisburg. There's nothing going on evenings. So it's very peaceful and it's quite friendly for children and uh, the living costs are medium. So this way we can basically understand what kind of products we can offer to this customer. Um, and uh, if we go, for example, in the area in uh, uh, Köln, uh, Königs, oh man, man. Okay. Right, so we can see that what changed uh, that uh, there is more nature, the area is more uh, hipster like, uh, and the living cost increased a lot. Um, so, for this area, we can think about maybe more cool products which are more oriented uh, to the young population right um so what can be added more to this uh, 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 to this solution so of course to think depending on which product you want to offer to the customers it's interesting to analyze like what's um, um what are what other things can influence a customer for example number of charging stations in the surrounding does customer see, for example, all the time windmills around him or uh, solar panels on the on the roofs of the neighbors? And uh, so obviously, if all the neighbors have already solar panels, so you probably want to join them. Right. Um, the demo is will be live. It's uh, there's uh, some bugs, uh, but um, I uploaded the presentation on Slack, and you can uh, later in an hour probably uh, test it out. Right. So if you would, okay, a few, a few mistakes it's from uh, from the old presentation. Um, right. So this is the presentation. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm very much open for the questions. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Uh, so I have a question. How did you yeah. um, uh, get the hipster factor? Uh, right, so the hipster factor, it's um, what I did. I analyzed the number of bars or uh, cafes, and then the ratings on social media and ah, okay. uh, also number of shops all right so it's uh, really uh yeah so so serious data right so um this solution is quite complicated from the from the calculation area so one of the uh one of the major uh, hurdles was to uh kind to standardize the values uh, so not to have the absolute numbers like 270 or 
26 or something, but to standardize it by the, uh, by the like five rating, for example, five star rating, so that it's uh, easier to, to use in uh, market analysis. Right. Uh, Great. Hey, uh, Andre, yeah. just a question for me. This uh, this looks really cool. By the way, I tried your demo, and it's not uh, the the yeah, API isn't responding right now. But um, it's, it's not working. There's uh, uh, some uh, some problems with uh, if if you access this from the internet. Yeah. From other network, there's some security blocking there. I need to fix it, and like in an hour, okay. you can try it out. Great. Just just let us know over Slack if there's anything we can do to help. And I was wondering if if this is open source, can we also check out the source code you worked on? Uh, I need to think about that. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing is I also used a lot of um, a lot of keys in passwords for uh -huh. because it's hosted on AWS. Yes. Yeah. So I will need to clean up GitHub and a lot of other things. Okay. Well, really encourage you to to do that. It would be really awesome for us to check out for the, for everyone who pushed pushed one in the chat room. Especially, it would be nice to see your code. Mm -hmm. Great. So thank you for your attention. And we, uh, think we yeah, can... it looks like a it looks like a great tool. Thank you very much. Um, did I miss another group? Uh, did anybody work actually on the electricity map or on the North app that we didn't really see? Do you hear me or am I? I can hear you. Well. You can hear me. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Sorry. So, am I? Uh, no, nobody d uh, worked on the electricity map or on the North app, huh? I'm, I'm right. Was there any activity in their Slack channel? Um, known. Uh, well, no, it's not true. Actually, at the beginning, uh, Xiao Jin was working on that. But then I think she stopped for the electricity map. And the North app team, I, I also think that not much happened. OK, great. So if, if someone from the challenge owners is interested, it's, it's Andre speaking. I, can, I looked into that. and. Uh, it's quite simple to add this data there. They have a um, uh, standard procedure how you can add this, and it's need to be developed some sort of a, a data transformer for that. And it's, it didn't look complicated. So, but uh, sorry, I didn't hear the first word. Well, you meant for which which project? It's for energy map for energy map. It's an open source project, okay. and they have very simple procedure to integrate this information. But this information need to be avail available from somewhere. So, but it's also not much of it. Okay. If someone interested, okay. I think maybe ten hours or less. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much for this feedback as well. Yeah. So for for the North app, um, I can all I can say is that. Um, the 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 project challenge originated with quite a strong interest on the part of the uh, one of the founders of Tomorrow, the company who built the app to support the hackathon, and uh, we did invite them to join in and uh, to clarify the challenge. So for the North app, it's not that straightforward. So you you really kind of you have to create a, an adapter in code. Um, you have to know the 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 source data well, and you know have to know the target data reasonably well. They have example code and a lot of documentation um, but i think the 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 support of the people would be extremely appreciated um especially as uh, uh yeah as is it's, it's it's not as trivial as adding data to say the electricity map which is a different kind of challenge But yeah, um, I think there was there was not so there was not a lot of discussion around the North app. But we maybe can say a few things about the electricity map. 
if anybody from that team wants to pitch something. Um, I don't think that many people are around of the electricity map. I mean, maybe uh, Xiao Qin was uh, a little bit thinking about that, but then uh, I don't think she's here on the on the call. So in, in that case, maybe I'll just say uh, for the three projects that we've had presented, it would be really great to get each one of you here on these on these bubbles on the Hack Days results webpage. So we're going to um, take off the North app because I don't think anything was done there. And if there's any results that will will go in um, for the from the discussion around the electricity map, we we will add it here as well. Um, I do have a question to the two teams who did the uh, the customer analysis. Do you do you want to bundle it into one project, or would you like to just you know to have two separate presentations? You can also put it together. Um... Or we can have two separate presentations. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind neither. I, I would. I think it would be better to have two, just because you both have really nice presentations, and it would be great if we can just stick them right at the top of the page so people can review uh, the results afterwards. Maybe yeah, can sure. Also I mean, contact you have already the PDF. Do you, see, mm -hmm. do you need anything else? Or if if you would like me to upload the PDF, I can do that. Yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Or for me, it's fine. Do you want? Is it fine for you, Tina, as well? Yeah. I just don't want to be like Googled with my name and this pops up. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I only wrote our surname, uh, first name, so I don't think. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine then. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, you know, protecting uh, the, this wish to have anonymous submission is, is something that's really important to us. So mm. it's absolutely fine. You don't need to use your real name anywhere. And mm. we, we can set up, I mean, right now we have the Slack. So we have actually a link to this to your Slack channel on the project page, right? But the Slack is not yet open access, right? It's only for people who are joining the Energy Hack Days. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, if you want to have something, mm -hmm. it's just when someone googles my name and then this presentation comes up. Yeah. No, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But it's uh, if 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 um, if we get requests, if we get questions about your project. We will try to contact you through your yeah, team channel. That's fine. Yeah. And and you don't of course you don't need to stay inside of the Slack or you know from from now on you can just get an email notification, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what would be interesting uh, for all the teams is actually that you uh, maybe make sure that the people who took part are listed in the in the Slack or or somewhere that we really know who worked. Uh, because it's, uh, it's sometimes a bit difficult to track back. And what's also interesting to know is exactly the, the black points. So the uh, missing data, the missing links or the missing elements that uh, were obstacles to the project. And very interesting is also when one starts to think about what would be next steps or what would need the project. So um, like a, a bit of call for action or a call for help or a call for um, uh, yeah, next steps. Uh, this is always very interesting. It gives a sense of what the, how could the project go on. Yeah. So uh, speaking about next steps, <laughs> um, I wanted to share a couple of things with you uh, regarding the future of the energy data topic. And um, unfortunately, I think Matthias, are you here? Matthias Eifert? 
I don't think I don't see him on the bridge, and I did try several times to reach him. I hope he managed to make it back to Germany. Okay, I, um, I know he he was traveling up there last night. But Matthias has uh, been a kind of a key person behind this event, uh, you know, organizing the the last year's Energy Hack Days and stepping in to organize the Energy Data Working Group. And I just want to make sure that uh, well that we don't lose the thread here. So there's a couple of things uh, we have been doing also in regards to the energy data topic itself, right? So I think the, the electricity map is a really good example of a project where, you know, there's a, there's a clear request, you know, put, this, put Switzerland on the map, right? And a clear platform, electricitymaps.org. And the, and the reason is, hey, there's an open data API. So projects which uh, challenge us in this way usually are really good. The problem, of course, uh, occurs when you know we we don't really have the the technical capacities, or you know it's you know people are working on we don't have the ability to work on every project that's submitted, etc. But I do think it's it's important to collect uh, to ha be a hub in Switzerland for people who are interested in open energy data, who are looking for data sets like this, and who are looking for you know good projects to contribute to. Good in the sense of they're sustainable, they're free, they are non-commercial, whatever the criteria that people don't find in the usual places, um, that's the kind of criteria you want to find at the open energy data working. So like I mentioned yesterday in the introduction presentations, we started a week ago to go through a list of, of, of data sets. Um, this list uh, you can see here. It's just at the top of the page, so under here, open data where uh, we have this a list of data sets related to energy. And some of you have looked at this list. So maybe I'll, I will do Andre's trick again and say just, could you put a, a, a one if you, um, if you found some new data uh, through one of the resources that was published? And two, if you found all your data through other sources like Googling or data that you brought to the event. So I'd just like to know, one, did you, did you use any of the data resources we provided? Two, no, you didn't. Oh, I don't remember, actually. <laughs> Give it your gut feeling. <laughs> I ran too many of the data sets. Uh, you provided this Excel sheet. Mm -hmm. and yeah, but finally we did not actually use it because the data were all very different, so it was not possible to combine. It, it, like for example, for for Switzerland, that's either by, by by always different kind of groups, so you cannot combine the information. Yeah, so that was the problem actually. Like the one I used for Basel, it would be great to have the same kind of data for each city. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. would be a problem I have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, abs absolutely. So this is this is exactly this is exactly it. I mean, we can do a best effort to provide uh, the data sources that are that are that were given. Uh, there was also an interesting comment over the chat from Derek saying no actual programming done, and. We don't just provide data sets so that you can do programming on them. You know, a data that is very open, that is very accessible, should be usable without having to do programming. Right. So that 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 that's you know you're absolutely welcome to use uh, data tools, things like spreadsheets and visualization tools and explore, data exploration tools. Um, and you will find uh, you know that in this in this we had this discussion in our Slack channel toolbox where people have been suggesting various tools to dig into the data. And we'll try to continue that. So what I wanted to say is that uh, we have um, continued working on this list. So there's this uh, GitHub repository. Um, I committed uh, some new, some uh, the fresh list. We have the data from last year. And we have also this new data from, from what uh, mostly Matthias has been working on. Uh, is a collection of, uh, of additional data sources, which represent the, you know, the kind of new interest, new new potential data partners. Um, we can see more international data sets coming in from Europe and Germany. Uh, it was really cool to to have your participation remotely, Andre. 
even though you're not even based in Switzerland. And I think that's uh, that's that's really what the open data community is, is here for. The other thing is that we had um, uh, notably uh, Tutana, the GitHub user Zutzville, um, worked on a data package for the photovoltaic optimization. So this is uh, this can be found in a separate channel. This was from one of the original uh, um, sponsors of the of today's hack days AEW energy and so we'd really like to thank them for uh, contributing a data set uh, that we were able to publish uh, in, an, in an open format I knew that they wanted to publish more data they wanted to support us with with challenges and unfortunately that uh, uh, that didn't happen because of the uh, the coronavirus and we also have some additional uh, suggestions here you can see that in the last couple of weeks there have been other proposals uh, some of them from people who've come to the event some from people who are more external so our our goal is to continue to use this process so if there's any data that you have worked on within your projects or even just came across and you think this really belongs uh, this really belongs here this needs more attention this needs more work um, please feel free to just add a new issue put a link in there and and keep us posted uh, Nicole is saying she's just having to drop off. So thank you very much, Nicole. And uh, we hope to be in touch with you again soon. So that's uh, that's the status. I just wanted to share one other thing is that there's, of course, opendata.swiss. This is the Swiss federal government initiative. Um, they currently have uh, something like 150 data sets on the energy topic. Um, only eight of them are in CSV format, so really readily accessible. So, for example, something like uh, this, uh, these Kenzahlen Neuwagenflotte, which show you uh, from the from the Bundesamt of Energie, will show you how many um, uh, cars are being used by the different uh, organizations. So, very you know, kind of really interesting to find out more about the uh, the the the, polit the political side of things, the the, the gov you know, the gov how government resources are being spent in a sustainable way. So, these are there's some quite cool data sets here. Some of them are quite accessible. And of course, the long-term goal is that we also have uh, community efforts to, to improve this, uh, this situation. Right. Um, so I also want to make a quick comment about the, the fact that we had a virtual event. Um, we are on Jitsi here. And uh, we, we, we started yesterday trying to set up a Jitsi channel, and then we quickly got into problems. Uh, uh, really thankful to the Jitsi team for reaching out, uh, talking to us about the problems we were having, the technical issues, as well as boosting capacity to make sure that we can have this video conference and to have the ability to live stream to YouTube. So this is being recorded, so we can all review it for posterity. Um, it's really great to have to have the support without any money changing hands from a really cool open source project. So thank you very much to them. Um, and uh, we're not the only ones stuck in a virtual conference. As you can see here, these are uh, people from the Japanese uh, open data community who are who also were planning to have a hackathon. And uh, coronavirus uh, prevented them from doing that. So they switched to, uh, I think they, you know, they're also using Jitsi here, maybe Hangouts. I can't quite tell. Anyway, they ended up doing their, their hackathon online. Um, and today is Open Data Day. So throughout the world, um, People are celebrating open data, the cause, the idea, the movement. And it's it's a really an honor for me to, to be here with you, to be sp spending this time together, to be thinking about uh, some of the possibilities, some of the problems, some of the challenges as well around uh, transparent and sustainable data sources. So if you have any, um, any interest on this, check out the hashtag. Um, the, our parent association, Open Knowledge, will be highlighting tweets which are tagged with hashtag Open Data Day, so you know, make a tweet about your project, tag it, um, and there's a good chance it'll be picked up uh, in this uh, big international uh, awareness campaign um, happening today. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I wanted to say. And um, I'll, I'll leave it up to to Mode to tell us what happens next. Um, thank you, Oleg, for leaving me this task. <laughs> uh, no, the um, next week we're gonna uh, get back together with all the partners, 
and uh, we'll figure out um, uh, a date where uh, when the, the real life open data, open energy data hack days will uh, take place. And we'll keep you posted uh, as soon as, uh, as we get some concrete information. But of course, um, I also see a bit in advance that it's not going to be an easy decision as the coronavirus is not really uh, something that one can plan on. So, um, yeah, it's difficult to say uh, when it's going to take place, uh, at least for me uh, at this point. But we will keep you posted uh, next week on the next steps. So. Um, Thank you very and, much and to all thought, of you. Yeah. So, sorry, I just wanted to chime in and say, the in, in addition to the energy hack days, there are other hackathons coming up, right? Where can we find out about that? Yes. So on the opendata.ch website, on the project or unless page, you will find all the coming hack days. One is uh, not online yet because it's uh, the the organizers and uh, the, the partners are uh, a bit shy about the hack days in the coming time but the next uh, hack day which is planned is the smart city lab lensburg which is taking place the 24th and 25th of april in lensburg so it's uh, it's i think it's going to be a very interesting um, hack day with many partners and um, you can draw, uh, scroll down and show the very nice room where it's going to take place. It's in the, the aula of a very nice, very nice aula. Oh, it's not on. No, there is no picture of it. Okay, so it was. There used to be a picture. Something happened. Um, and the. Um, the one which is not uploaded yet, uh, but should also take place, hopefully, is the legal, legal uh, open legal data hack day, which should take place, I think, the 4th and 5th of May in um, Magalin, I think it's called. Andrea is taking uh, care of this one, so I am less uh, informed. Um, Ma I, I, thank you, Maglingen. Thank you. This helps. Then we have uh, the forum of Open Data, which is uh, our co yearly conference where we try to make a snapshot of uh, the the open data landscape uh, in Switzerland and uh, in and in Europe. And I think this edition is going to be extremely interesting because we want to talk about. Uh, data utopias or where do we want to go with data on this data society so i am really looking forward that one forward to that one and then we also have the um, glam hack days which is uh, uh taking place for the fifth year in a row it's a very well established hack day um the glam hack uh it's even the sixth uh, edition because I think some years there were two editions is taking place in core and it's all the um, uh, gal it's galleries mu museums and archives uh, gathering around the thematic of uh, data and what can you do with cultural data so it's also a very interesting and a very um, um, how do you say dense and involved community because of course all the people who are archiving information are really into archiving information and, and data so this is also super cool are any of you here so, planning to come to any of these events are you signed up i signed up with a lot for the one in lensburg smart cities awesome so yeah. ah, cool. great Let's okay. see. April, it's very soon, so let's see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's in a month. Yeah, yeah indeed. Yeah. Um, I, I do. So on under opendata.ch slash save the dates, I'll put the link into the channel as well. 
there is uh, the the list of events, and, we, and obviously we're gonna we need to update this because um, the museum's Nacht Bern has just been cancelled because of coronavirus. So obviously ah, yeah, this was not happening. Yeah, yeah. This is not Open Geneva happen. has also been cancelled. I just received word, so I don't think this is happening. Um, and I'm I'm currently so I'm one of the core uh, kind of spiritual advisors or whatever of the Make Zurich uh, team. I'm also uh, really looking, really hoping at the end of this month we'll be able to do uh, this civic tech hackathon in some form. Um, there are currently is an intense discussion about what to do with the uh, with the virus outbreak, um, whether we can adopt some of the lessons from this weekend's hackathon um, here. And uh, again, this has been a, a kind of a, a tradition to do to do a hackathon with the open hardware community that I really hope will not break. Um, and, and just one more event from my side I'd really want to mention is Hack for Social Good. This is happening uh, the same weekend as Glam Hack, so kind of overlaps with it. Um, I'll just have to figure out how to be in two places at the same time. As you guys know, I'm, I've, I've, I've been working on my teleportation device for a long time, and with any luck, <laughs> it'll be up and running. But Hack for Social Good is uh, is not just. A, I'd like to a, try the teleportation. You're you're welcome to yes if you're if you're oh, brave, yeah. you might end up uh, splitting it. It's worth it. Yes, at your own risk. <laughs> yeah. Well, that splitting is the whole thing for you now. It's not about teleportation. It's about splitting. So I, I just want to say that this this hackathon is uh, is important, especially important to me because it's a part of a research collaboration with the social science department of the university of the University of Applied Sciences of Bern, and in in this in this uh, research, it's been going on for a couple of years. So we've been trying to understand what makes hackathons great. Um, and uh, the, the, these are these are people who have been really trying to understand the format and and how to uh, make it um, make it better, but also especially how to make it better for the participants. One of the key questions we've been trying to address is what what can you take home with you after the hackathons? What 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 is the what is really the benefit? Um, and, and how to make make hackathons really pay off in the long term? So, in the spirit of this event, um, I would like to. Uh, uh, offer a small compensation to the th three teams that have presented. Yes, Maud, we had three teams. Yes. Oh, my, my um, yes. So photovoltaic I'd, and the two client teams. Exactly. So I'd like to offer uh, each of you who presented um, a, a hundred franc gift voucher to something called Open Collective. This is a, a place where you can support open source and open data projects. Um, it's, a, it's a place where uh, it, is, it is possible to also fund your projects. If you're thinking about uh, continuing your hacking and uh, if, you, if you think you need some, you know, some to organize some additional resources to you know, not just do it in your free time, but also uh, get some financial support, Open Collective is a, is a good place to do that. And in any case, if you want to try it, you'll have gift vouchers, which you'll get in an email. Um, which you can spend on any project here. You just you just do a search here for for any project you like. You can spend it, for example, on drip dad. Um, oops, demo effect. I am not saying you have to at all, but this is this is my uh, hackathon platform that I've been working on. This is what we've been using to collect the projects. So it's up on here and takes contributions. But so do uh, thousands and thousands of open source and open data projects that you can support. So thank you very, very, very much for your time, for your efforts. And uh, you know, let's let's make open data pay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the Thanks everybody. Yeah, thank Thanks you so much. That was Bye. cool. Thank you and uh, have a nice Bye -bye. rest of the weekend. Bye. Yes, thank you very much, guys. Very awesome. Yes, Great. enjoy. Stay healthy. Sure, sure.